Good morning and welcome to today's daily devotion for Monday the 11th of October. Today we look at Jesus out and about in Galilee doing good, healing the sick, being followed by many and challenged by the Pharisees who were the religious leaders of the day. But first let's pray. Lord God, we come before you now to ask that you would open our eyes and hearts to learn from you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're looking at the passage in Mark chapter 2, verse 18 to chapter 3, verse 30. And it might be helpful in time to read this. In this passage, Mark describes Jesus out with his followers, teaching them and answering questions from other people. The first question is asked from John's disciples. Why don't you and your disciples fast? And in Mark 2, verses 18 to 22, Jesus answers by saying that you don't fast when the bridegroom is present at a wedding. It's a time of great joy. He speaks about repairing old fabric with new, which will tear. He talks of new wine in old wineskins, which will burst. And he explains that new wine should be put in new wineskins. He walks through a cornfield on the Sabbath and he picks ears of corn as he moves. The Pharisees challenge him that he's breaking the law by working on the Sabbath. Then Jesus says the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath that this is a challenging statement for the Pharisees who will know their history and know that one like the Son of Man is mentioned in the book of Daniel. In Mark 3, verses 1 to 6, Jesus goes into a synagogue, a place of worship. He sees a man with a withered hand and the Pharisees can see him too. They're watching to see what Jesus will do in the synagogue. He asked the man with the withered hand to stand up. And then he says to them, which is lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? No one answers him. We have it on record that Jesus looked at them in anger and in deep distress in their stubborn hearts. And as they looked on, Jesus healed a man with the withered hand and it was completely restored. And then we have a very significant verse in chapter, in verse six of chapter two. The Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians, the followers of Herod, that they might kill Jesus. A sinister move. The fast pace of Jesus's life continues. The crowds follow him. They know he's healed many and with and those with diseases want to get close to him. And whenever evil spirits saw him, they recognised him and fell down and cried out, you are the son of God. Notice he accepts the title. During all this, he appoints his disciples, Simon, Jesus gave him the name Peter, James, John, Sons of Thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot. And then we move on to verses 20 to 30 of chapter 3, which pose a very interesting question about Jesus. The teachers of of the law, the Pharisees, have come down from Jerusalem and they say that Jesus is possessed by Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And that by the prince of demons, he's driving out demons. Jesus responds by asking them a question. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, it will fall. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob him. Jesus destroys their argument. Who is Jesus? 
We all have to make up our minds. Was he good? Evil? Sane or insane? God or not? Early in Mark's Gospel, we meet the, the, some astonishing claims about Jesus. He clearly regarded himself more than a religious teacher. We are faced with three options. Either he was evil or insane, or else he was who he said he was. The teachers of the law said he was Beelzebul. By the prince of evil, he's driving out demons and he has an evil spirit. In verse 21 of chapter 3, they say he's out of his mind. If he is, is he God? Earlier, I've described how Jesus implied he was the bridegroom. He describes himself as Lord even of the Sabbath. And we have seen evil spirits say, you are the son of God. Jesus does not deny the title, but tells the spirits not to tell anyone. C.S. Lewis, a Christian writer of the last century, summed it up like this. We are faced then with a frightening alternative. The man we are talking about, Jesus, either was and is what he said, or else insane or something worse. Now, it seems obvious to me that he is neither insane nor a fiend. And consequently, however strange or terrifyingly unlikely it may seem, I have to accept the view that he was and is God. God has landed on this enemy-occupied world in human form. The disciples after, came to the conclusion after spending much time with Jesus that he really was the unique son of God. Jesus called them and he calls us first to be with him and then to take his message to the world. Jesus finishes talking to the Pharisees with these words, I tell you that truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven, but those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit will never be forgotten. He is guilty of an eternal sin. Jesus said this because the Pharisees said that Jesus had an evil spirit within him. Some people are concerned by that question, that statement, because they feel that they may have committed this sin. People who are troubled and willing to repent may be sure they have not committed the sin. Those who are repentant will be forgiven. Jesus is referring to a fixed attitude of mind. He does not say that the Pharisees have committed the sin, but they're in danger of doing it. They were duly accredited teachers of the law in daily contact with the world of God. The sin is the attitude that regards good as evil and evil as good. They sank to a point where they couldn't, they could sink to a point where they cannot repent and they cannot be forgiven. But we're assured throughout the New Testament that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and will forgive us our sins. Let's pray. Jesus, help us to worship you today as the bridegroom, our Lord and the Son of God. Amen. Whatever you are doing today on this day of new freedoms, may you enjoy your time. God bless you.